Hello, everybody. I'm Kathy Girl. And if you don't know me, good for you. <laughs> You're about to, because I was asked to do this performance. Because last year, I won a singing competition. But since then, I turned 13 years old, and my voice sounds terrible. <laughs> now, if you're one of those people who are like, bah, I'm like, you can sing just fine. I will give you exactly what you want and prove my point at the same time. Let me sing you a couple of bars, and please cover your ears if you're sensitive to frustrating noises. <laughs> let it go, let it go. I can't hold it back anymore. You see what I mean? So, to spare you all, I am taking the much less uncomfortable route and doing stand-up comedy. Because that's better, right? <laughs> now, something that I have a lot of is anxiety. And the weird thing about it is that I get it from my parents. <laughs> Some of it's inherited, like how my brother, Peter Solomon, he gets a lot of his theatrics from my mom. But not everything's about you, Noah. It's my turn. <laughs> anyway, some of it I inherit, but most of it I get because they warned me about a lot of things when I was very, very little. Like from the age of two, they had warned me not to do stand up comedy, which is ironic. <laughs> but they had also warned me about getting kidnapped, and that is something I still have a fear of today. But I'm not talking about getting like lured in. For me, I'm not really worried about that. I'm talking about getting picked up by an adult person and taken away from my friends and family. And that doesn't really work for me because I weigh 120 pounds. <laughs> the only time anybody would try to pick me up ever is at like a carnival. We need a carnival barber standing there and be like, step right up, step right up. See if you are strong enough to lift the unliftable boy. <laughs> To help with a lot of my anxieties, though, I've been going to see a therapist, and it's been going great. At first, I didn't want to do it at all, but it's become a highlight of my week. And my therapist has gotten to know me so well, to the point where he can know what kind of meeting we're going to have by just looking at me. Like one time, I had a really bad day, and I was standing in the lobby waiting for him. He was walking down the hallway talking to another patient. He was like, all right, you're doing great. I can talk to one more patient, and I'm done for the day. Oh, boy. <laughs> This one's going to be a doozy. <laughs> that meeting actually ended up going really well. Um, something that we're constantly working on, though, in my anxiety, in my therapy, is my social anxiety that I also have a lot of. And that kind of inhibits my ability to make close friends, relationships with people. But since going to therapy, I've gotten out there more, and I've made quite a large friend group for myself, and I Keep it tight with all of them. You could ask all two of them. They'd say great things. <laughs> and they're more social than I am. They go to parties and stuff. They're like, hey, are you going to that party this weekend? And I'm like, uh, I got plans. They're like, what kind of plans? And they blink and I'm gone. <laughs> uh, like, I'm, up. I'm already home in my weighted blanket watching comedians and cars getting coffee. That's why we can't stay home. It's done. But something I can't escape even when I'm at home and I wait in my head, is my little sister, Brittany. She's somewhere in this audience. <laughs> she is what gives me a distinct fear of five-year-olds. She's about <laughs> yay high. She's about yay high. And it's what my mom would call fierce. I would call her a little murderous. <laughs> <laughs> because she has the habit of kicking, scratching, biting, and punching. She also has a habit of beating me with swords, but that's not the point. <laughs> the funny part is, you can ask her right now and be like, are you mean? And she's like, oh, no, I am doing nothing to no one. I'm five years old. Look at how cute I am. But the moment we get home, the terror begins. <laughs> she is the most violent child I have ever seen. <laughs> but when there's a violent child out to get you, you have to stay kind of active. You have to come up with survival techniques, which I have. One of the best ones, and the most effective, is impressions of her favorite cartoon characters. That works really well, but then it gets kind of weird when I'm out in public places, like the mall, for example. 
And people are like, hey, how are you? Like, hey, how are you? I'm good. Did you catch the game last night? I did. It was crazy. You know how people talk? <laughs> and I'm over there like, hey, how are you? How are you? Saying? And they all turn to look at me funny. But it's weird because my impressions have carried over into my normal life. Like sometimes I'm walking into rooms and I go, oh, <laughs> <laughs> one time I was at a rehearsal for a play I did recently, and one of my castmates was kind of leaving. He like reached for the doorknob, and I went, Christopher Robin, why am I still always leaving? He throws up. He slowly turns the doorknob and shuffles away, still looking at me. <laughs> but something that has been inhibited by my anxieties is my wanting to and my ability to play sports. And I haven't tried it for a sport in seven years. That has led to a severe lack of knowledge. I pick up key phrases here and there, but it ends up reading like a madness. For example, the team has the puck. They're drilling it around the bases. Young swings the putter. It's going, it's going, it's gone. Go! And the crowd goes wild. Touchdown, home run, strike. <laughs> I am lucky enough to have friends, family, a therapist, who all care enough to help me. But one of the key players in my battle against anxiety are my parents. The ones who are A, breathing into bags, and also, they're putting up with my anxieties constantly. They put up with my sensory issues. I can't wear tags in my shirts, they put up with that. I wear long clothes in 90 degree weather, they put up with that. They're the only people in my life who I know will drop me off at school in 90 degree weather in my winter gear with no tags in it and be like, all right, son, have a good day, make good choices. Then they roll up the window really slowly, grab a cup of coffee, chug their 50th cup of coffee, and say, what have we done in the poor life? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I'm Jack Henry.